GM everyone, my name is Michael Fang, one of the co-founders of Hummingbot. Today we're going to kick off a new live stream series where we're going to use a bit more of AI to control bots, a DEX trading agent. And I'll kind of just go over uh, some, a few thoughts I have, uh, the notion of agents, especially as it pertains to trading. As an introduction, uh, Hummingbot uh, is an open source framework that people use to build crypto trading bots. It's used by a lot of individuals as well as small trading firms um, all over the world. We've been ma maintaining it and, and kind of doing a release every month uh, since about April 2019. You know, I thought it was interesting, this experiment talked about a lot on Twitter, how someone has taken a crypto trading engine, uh, kind of like Hummingbot. Uh, so they actually could have used Hummingbot to build this, but basically it was doing lots of like long and short trades, different coins. Uh, and they basically just had an AI kind of like select some various trades and, and and try to have different AIs compete with one another. I kind of threw some shade at this at Twitter because I was like, this is monkeys throwing darts. But to be honest, I, I would say, I actually think this is a really interesting experiment because what they did was they gave the models some space to explore and some constraints and some goal, right? Which is to go make money. If you want the models to have as much power as possible, a big part of it is, can you establish fast and reliable connections to as many trading venues as possible? And do you have a system that can kind of monitor all these connections, make sure that you can place trades and fetch data from all these places? That is kind of what we basically built already. The last release, 2.10, really started adding more AI stuff into Hummingbot. Let's go. First thing is let's define what is a trading agent. My definition is an AI that can manage one or more trading tasks. Uh, and these tasks might range from something very simple. Let me know when my LP position is out of range, or let me know when the value of my portfolio has dropped by more than 10%. Very simple tasks like notifications, fetching data, then you can kind of increase the complexity level to things that are actually performing transactions like rebalancing a portfolio, closing all positions in the event that something happens. And then you can ramp up the complexity curve even more to an agent that is aware of the market and environment and has a set of strategies that they can employ uh, and is deciding whether to run or stop a set of strategies in order to minimize or maximize a set of objectives or constraints. TLDR, I think of an, a trading agent as an intern replacement. Let's talk about the tasks that we can automate and how to evaluate if this intern is gonna do them successfully. To me, a trading task is a process that can be automated to improve PL or save time. Be aware that anything you build with AI initially is gonna suck. You know, and we'll see this today. Really, the process is kind of streamlining the process, you know, more and more. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the environment and we're going to define the strategy, design and code the strategy. And then finally, we'll run and evaluate the strategy. Uh, first things first, the environment comprises of two things. Uh, the first is the Hummingbot API, which is a local or remote server. The Hummingbot API is basically a central command center for your trading operations. Uh, it's open source, it's free. Uh, anyone can download and install from GitHub or Docker Hub. It has a lots of standardized REST API endpoints that allow you to connect to different exchanges, perform trades on those exchanges, create different trading automated trading strategies and deploy them uh, using in these bots uh, where each bot is basically a running Docker container. The API is actually quite powerful, but it's also quite hard to use because it's, it has so many endpoints. But you can also kind of run multiple instances of Hummingbot that are each running different strategies. So you can basically orchestrate a fleet of individual bots, each of which are doing different things. So these bots right now are deterministic. These strategies are not AI driven, but uh, I think an AI can easily kind of select between uh, a menu of different strategies, configure them uh, and deploy and manage and stop bots that are running those strategies. There's actually quite a lot of power that the AI has access to. However, I think having access and actually being able to build a reliable agent that does what you want is, is a different matter. Uh, the second piece 
that we've added recently on top of API is the MCP server. So the MCP server are a set of tools that help you manage the API. The tools we have are configuring the API server, getting a portfolio overview, place order, search history, and so forth. These tools are kind of like a higher level abstraction on top of the API. For example, instead of having a tool for all of these different kind of swap endpoints, there's one single tool called Manage Gateway Swaps that helps you quote, execute, and then confirm the result of a swap transaction. You can use API on its own. You can, you can just install I mean, API, uh, these are all standardized REST endpoints, and you can design some type of application or trading agent that just calls those API endpoints directly. Uh, feel free to do that. Uh, but as, a, as an end user, it's probably easier just to integrate this MCP server uh, into your AI assistant, whether it's Claude or it's OpenAI, Codex, Cursor, or it could be anything else, and then kind of access API directly from this. So, because like after you have access to the, the, the agent like this, if you ask a question like this, this should actually trigger a usage of this tool, explore gateways to own pools. Uh, yeah, so you can see it calling this tool. And, and so now to provide you uh, an answer. So as you can see, sometimes like the AI doesn't quite exactly get it right the first time. So it has to kind of spend a few more tokens to parse a response correctly. For Meteora, it found, yeah, the top 10 sole USDC pools. It basically ranked them also calculate the APY for all of them. The way I think about this is that the MCP is like the user interface. Before we have a command line client where you have to know exactly what the commands are to, to get it right. Now with MCP, there's a layer between this like really complex API and you. Let me show you right now how to set everything up. So if you follow the instructions on the release notes, just clone GitHub repository, go into the directory, and you just need to run the setup.sh command. So I've already run this. You do have this dashboard interface. You can set it up but right now because we're using MCP. The dashboard is, while it does have the functionality of deploying bots and configuring a strategy, it's kind of a bit out of date. I'm not gonna install it because we're gonna, it's basically gonna use MCP to do that instead. Um, everything else I'll just kind of leave as defaults. The setup command, will install the default credentials, update the Docker containers you need. It creates a Postgres database. It creates a EMQX broker to communicate between the different services. It creates the core API and the Hummingbot image. This setup command should basically do everything for you. You can just go ahead and install Hummingbot via the API. You can also individually install every repo as well. By default, we always run gateway on port 1588, uh, and then the API on port 8000. So now that we have the API running, let me show you how to set up the MCP. My favorite way is actually just through Docker. So right now I have Docker running. In Docker, there's an MCP toolkit. I think this is the easiest way to find the Hummingbot MCP server. Instead of adding many different kind of MCP servers, I think it's easier just to add one single MCP connection. If I add an MCP server, let me add the Hummingbot MCP server. I'll add this and then add MCP server. This client connect, if I open up cloud desktop, I should have access to the MCP Docker uh, as well as the gateway tools in the MCP server. So we can see here like this, uh, manage connectors. These are the Hummingbot tools made available by the agent. The, I think the hard part here is just installing Docker desktop and then just adding the Hummingbot trading agent. L let's mark off this part is done. L let's now proceed and talk about the strategy. Help me explore COM DEXs. How much do I have? You know, so, okay. Answer my question of, it told me how much available I had my Solana balance, which is about 400 in Sol, a, a bit of USDC. Uh, and, I'll, and it also fetched a bunch of pools from, from Meteora and kind of has some recommendations. I'm looking at this APY. I'm trying to maximize how much fees I earn. We can also just go here and just look at the concentrated pools on Radium. There are some differences. In Meteora, you can customize how much liquidity you have uh, in the range, whereas Radium, it's more of a one con continuous block 
of liquidity. The main factor here as a fairly experienced liquidity provider uh, is basically the APY. You wanna find the pools with the lowest amount of liquidity, highest amount of volume, uh, or you can think of the, of the fees. To me, like a, a more reliable strategy is more to look at exchanges like PancakeSwap Solana. PancakeSwap is a well-known exchange that started on Binance Smart Chain. Recently, they've expanded into Solana. Their TVL is only 64 million versus Radium, which is uh, at about 2 billion. And Meteor is about 600 million. The strategy will be some type of uh, strategy that just basically creates positions and pools like ore to farm rewards. The first thing we'll do is add this token. We just added this ore token to our token list. Let's buy some more. Let's buy, okay, let's do 10 worth of ore. We just bought a bit of ore. We bought uh, directly through API, $11 of ore. Now we have some ore. Let's go ahead and, and place something in this pool. So first let's add the pool into gateway. Find pancake soul pools with ore. Now what it just did was it used this new endpoint called slash pools find save. But basically what this endpoint will do is you can define just a network or you can define a connectors type and it will fetch from CoinGecko all the pools that fit this criteria you can do like this, see all the pools that we have available for the ore token. There's actually two pools, which are the two pools that we have here. So now you can see we have the new ore pool over here saved in the pools pancake swap soul uh, directory. Let's create a position soul or pool 20% wide using 0.02 or before we do this, let's actually, let's do this automatically through the API. First, let's get info on the pool. Connector is pancake. Here's a pool. This is actually an issue probably with the pool. Because the pool is so small, it's hard to calculate um, that slippage parameter correctly. Let's actually do this with a different token. We added the DBR token to the list. We did find this pool. Let's buy $10 worth of DBR. Great, okay, now we have 369. DBR tokens, and now we can actually probably deposit something. But now the second stage of the process is depositing, uh, creating a range in this pool. So open a position in this pool, 200 DBR range width. I think there's an issue with how I'm placing these positions. Let's try this. Let's, let's use the API directly. Um, and let's open up the position directly using the PancakeSwap soul connector. Uh, so get the pool address, we'll do everything manually. The pool address over here, this is the address in the pool. Let's try this, submit it, and we'll see. That actually worked. There's probably some translation we need to do between the MCP to the API or the API to gateway. At least we were able to at least add the token, add the pool, uh, and create the position, you know, uh, kind of using the API like this. Uh, our position to pancake swap, we should have a new position here, DBR, that's, that's earning 525% APY. I'm actually not gonna close this one because um, I'll leave it until next Friday. But next Friday, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna try to improve this PancakeSwap's connector, just to reiterate. So today, we actually did accomplish, we set up an environment, which is the API plus MCP. And we've also defined a strategy, uh, which is we're gonna just go to PancakeSwap Solana and, and create uh, small positions in the pools with the highest APRs. So next week, hopefully, we'll yeah, kind of get the connector uh, up a bit more polished, create a process that's automatable. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone who's tuned in, folks from uh, UCSC especially, you know, shout out Banana Slugs. See you guys next Friday.